We're looking at one of the worst months of the S&P 500 during the last recession, which is October of 2008. It's also the month our investment engine had one of its worst losses, but ended up gaining a little over 12% by the end of that month. In this next three to four minutes, you'll have a much better understanding how our system is designed to navigate this kind of a market. I've added the graph at the bottom depicting how much of the portfolio is invested versus in cash each day of the month. Remember I mentioned our engine works on zero cylinders up to all seven? When the graph is green from top to bottom, the engine is operating on zero cylinders. It's holding 100% cash. When it's mostly blue, most or all of the cylinders are running, we are full or nearly fully invested. But this graph doesn't tell us exactly what we bought and sold, so we'll look at a spreadsheet. This spreadsheet tells us exactly what each cylinder was doing for each day of the month. Each cylinder is listed top to bottom on the left, and each day of the month left to right across the top. You can see cylinder 1 is the busiest cylinder, holding a stock position during most of the days, while cylinder 7 rarely became active, only buying positions twice during the entire month. We'll also see that it seems most of the cylinders came to life and were working at about the same time. This is by design, and I'll show you why. By overlaying the spreadsheet on top of the graph, we'll be able to see how the market overall affects our engine, causing it to buy and sell stock positions. But first, let's look at just one cylinder and review the engine cylinder analogy with the stock positions it actually held for that month. The first position was Caterpillar, bought and then sold. Next up, Regenerant Pharmaceuticals. Then, Travelers was low, sold. Goldman Sachs found a new low, sold. And then GE. You get the idea. Actually, for being a horrible month in the market, seven of nine positions of this cylinder bought and sold made a profit. In fact, of the 35 positions we bought and sold that month, only nine lost money, which means 74% of our trades were successful within the teeth of the worst month of the recession. Now let's look a little more closely at the relationship of the market and our cylinders going into action. We start on day one with the market losing money. Caterpillar appears to be at the bottom of its short-term cycle, poised to go up next, so Cylinder 1 purchases it. Only one cylinder is running now, just a smidgen of blue shows up in the graph at the bottom. Days 2 and 3 see markets continue downward, causing five more cylinders to recognize value and spring into action. Let's take a little closer look at the positions taken. Cylinder 2 recognizes General Electric is near a bottom. Cylinder 3, Priceline, the same. Cylinder 4, picks up Apple. 5, Traveler's Insurance. And Cylinder 6, eBay. Now Caterpillar was held the longest possible period of time because it didn't hit a profit target. It obviously was not at the bottom of the cylinder and kept on going down. We lost 15% on that position, but the next four cylinders made profitable trades. Let's take a closer look. GE bought at the bottom green line and sold next day at the higher green and made 8.47%. Priceline made 6.93% in one day. Apple, 9.26%. And Travelers, 2.06%. Cylinder 6 kept hanging on to eBay because it didn't go up and hit a profit target. In fact, like Caterpillar, it kept going down and we lost 13% on that position. Now, let's drill into what happens next. As soon as our cylinders sold with mostly profitable results, the market continues to go down, giving our cylinders more opportunities. Six of the cylinders purchased new positions, Regenerant Pharmaceuticals, Home Depot, Express Scripts, McDonald's, and Google. After we buy these positions, the market continues to go down, dragging all our current positions down with it. None of our positions hit a profit target, 
thus all are held until the maximum holding period expires and then sold with losses ranging from 9% to 15%. In the meantime, the markets continued lower, creating more opportunities, so our engine, now running on all cylinders, picks up fresh positions in Travelers, American Express, United Health, Chevron, JP Morgan, Chase, Yahoo, and Cisco. Finally, the market goes up for a day, allowing all our new positions except Yahoo to bank healthy profits. Six of the seven cylinders book profits quickly, and three of them find new opportunities in Goldman Sachs, Coca-Cola, and Home Depot. Day 13 of the month, the market only goes down slightly, allowing our three new positions to book healthy gains quickly, bringing our portfolio value back to where it was at the beginning of the month while the market is still down nearly 15%. Since the market had gone up on Friday the 10th and only pulled back mildly Monday the 13th, our engine couldn't find any wholesale opportunities and thus took a short break, sitting 100% in cash. Tuesday the 14th, however, provided a substantial market pullback, not much recovery on the 15th, allowing Cylinder 1 to buy a freshly pulled back stock in General Electric. Another smaller pullback on the 16th finally gives four cylinders opportunities which all hit profit targets within a day. Our system doesn't recognize much value on the 20th and 21st due to the market having a small recovery in the three prior days, and thus it's mostly in cash days 20 and 21. But while they're resting, the market in the meantime is pulling back again, and by the 24th, all cylinders are again working new positions, of which six of seven book profits quickly. By the end of the month, our engine cranked out a little over 12% return, while the market ended up losing about 17%. Again, there was some pain involved, having lost 12.39% of the portfolio value along the way, but it was only a fraction of the pain those who were buying and holding, asset allocating and diversifying while losing nearly 30% of their portfolio in less than a month.